Hi guys, it's Hans with week 94 of the Channel on Monday series. Welcome back again. I selected a couple of printed papers from my Fenivar Vanity Mixed Media Art Journal, which I am now cutting to the right size so that I can glue them inside the journal when I'm done. It's a pretty short video today, it's 14 minutes, took me a bit over an hour to get it done and I wanted to keep it simple, work with simple products, um, keep the tones very soft and I absolutely wanted to add the wording that I had in mind which you will see later on. So after ripping a couple of strips of old book pages, I'm just gluing them down being careful not to have too much of the decoupage glue uh, anywhere else than underneath the paper. Once I have all the strips that I want, I make sure that everything is thoroughly dry before I go in with the next step, which is gesso. And I'm applying it using a dry brush and I'm applying it in a very, very thin layer. So I'm not really painting the gesso on it, I'm uh, slightly rubbing the gesso on it. This will allow me to blend the strips of paper in and to create a fun resist texture underneath for what I want to do uh, afterwards. Again, making sure that everything is dry. And now I'm using a Finovar stencil and some Lindy Stam Gang Flat Fabio, which is a spray ink, which has no blink whatsoever in it. And I'm just spraying randomly on top of the stencil. Quickly drying it with my heat gun, but as you can see, my stencil is still laying there with all the ink on, top, on, on it. And now I'm cleaning my stencil straight on my paper which will add some interesting splatters. I'm adding some more splatters using the same inks and then again drying it. I have to dry it thoroughly as I have gesso underneath it, so I have to bake it in the gesso. I want my edges to be a bit more clean than I have them, so I'm uh, cutting away all the excess book paper. And now again, I'm going back in with uh, gesso. Using a geometry stencil and just my finger, I'm applying gesso again, randomly in circles. Now I do try to apply the circles um, on the edge of the strips of papers that I glued down. So that I have something covering as well the printed paper as part of the book pages. Before I move my stencil around, I make sure that the circles that I have already done are dried. So you can see that I keep going from one um, part to the spread to the other part. And that's just because I want to make sure that the gesso has some time to dry before I replace my stencil on it. It's a very thin layer of gesso. I don't want to cover everything up. I just want to have a light circle of gesso on there. And as I had fun, I just kept going. As I still have some gesso over, I'm spraying some water on my craft sheet, adding some gesso to it, and now I can splatter it on my spread. Once everything is completely dried, I'm using gelados to add some color accents to the circles. Now, gelado and gesso are not that good friends. So I'm applying it very generously and I won't be blending it with water because it would uh, come completely off again. So I'm just blending it using my finger. I'm blending three shades of blue and one shade of yellow. So I'm starting with the lightest 
and one darker uh, shade of blue on one side of the circle to add a shadow to it. And I regularly clean off my fingers so that I don't blend all the colors together. And now I'm going in with the even darker blue to add some more shade just on one side. The yellow is only for in the middle of the circle so that it adds some depth to it. Now what I'm doing here with my gelatos, you could do the same with Neo Colors uh, too, or with uh, oil pastels, or even with dry pastels, or with pen pastels, the possibilities are endless. Just go uh, with what you have. And as you can see, I really take care of keeping my finger clean, so that I don't have one big blue splatter everywhere. I really want to have all those shades visible in my circles, as well as the gesso that's underneath. I want to keep it very, very soft. So adding a darker edge with distress ink all around. And as I do have gesso and glue on my paper, this will give me a nice resist to the gesso. So I'm using a baby wipe to soften the distress ink. And I've used the walnut stain here, so it's even darker than the vintage photo. And when I take it off, Having the resist from the gesso and the glue, it gives a distressing and even more distress, distressed look. And I liked it so much that I decided to add even more of it on, uh, on the spread. Now, it can be scary to do this because you have a big uh, stain of, of um, distress ink on your paper. But when you go over it with your baby wipe, it will give you some nice effects. You only have to be careful not to rip too much of the old book pages as there you don't have gesso everywhere so you have to do it carefully. Then I'm adding some uh, shading around the circles to make them pop just a little more from the spread and I'm using a charcoal pencil to do so and then I'm blending it using a blending stump. Now I did add a bit too much charcoal pencil so I'm using a kneadable gum to erase part of it. You won't be able to erase charcoal pencil with a normal uh, eraser, but you can do so with a kneadable one. Then I decided to add a little bit more shading to my circles. So I'm going back in with the gelatos until I have the effect that I like. And it's very calming to do so, to play and make your circles with the shading that you want. It's a bit of a meditative exercise. And now that I'm going back in with the yellow, you can really see how it adds depth to the to the circles then i start to work on my focal image and i will add the links uh, to the etsy shops where i got those um, collage images so if you want to have all the information about the product that I used or the links to the Etsy shops for these images, you can check out my blog. You will see the link at the end of this video, as usual. So I'm just trimming them. And then slightly adding distress ink on the edges to take off the white from the edge.
then I want to give my focal image um, place to stand on, so I'm just tearing up some washi tape to give her um, a suckle to stand on. Now the wings are a bit too red to my liking, so I'm toning them down, just applying gesso, again using a dry brush in a very very thin layer. I don't want to turn them white. And I think that the kiddo with the wings just make a very very cute little image. Stamping using my design cube and I'm shadow stamping again, so I'm thinking distress ink, stamping on a piece of towel first and then stamping on my paper so that I have a very soft stamping. And I'm going to, to do the same using my splattered mug, which are all stamped ink stamps. And it's all stamped in distress ink. Then using my typewriter alphabet and some colored uh, archival ink, I'm stamping on a piece of white cardstock. And I'm stamping the text that I want to use, which is Wing It. And it's a happy accident that this ink has a color that works so well with, um, with my spread. Now to turn my paper, my uh, text paper in the right, right size, I'm just tearing it using a ruler. And then adding some distress ink so that it's less white. Spraying some water over it. And this will also make the archival ink pop on top of the paper. It really gives it a, a nice effect. Adding some more distress ink so that the edges really look um, distressed. And then I want to place it on a piece of cambric. So I'm cutting my cambric and, and I sew them together. Placing some knots in my excess threads to make sure that everything stays securely in place. And then using my scissors, I'm distressing the edges of the cambric even more. So I'm not just cutting a straight line. And then tearing with my fingers, I make some, take some uh, fibers apart. Then I want to stamp my uh, splattered mark again on the uh, wording. Just again, shadow stamping, taking ink, stamping on a piece of um, towel and then stamping on the paper so that it's really soft. Now I can glue my focal image in place. And to give it the same finish, finished look as the circle, I'm adding some charcoal pencil again, but I'm only adding it on one side of my focal image, um, on the shadowy side. So it's on the same darkest side as my circles. So that everything has um, the, sh the shadow coming from the same side. Adding some more splatters on top of everything. And again, I have to really dry it on there so that it stays um, in place. Doing the same thing on the other side, and that's about it actually for today. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Both are very much appreciated. I wish you a very happy week and see you back next time. Ta-da!